Hey guys, it's me, Sloan Ivy, and today on my show, I'm going to talk about health, particularly autoimmune disease. Now, autoimmune diseases are the third largest illness or disease behind cancer and heart disease in the United States. And it's something that's not touched on as much, but today I'm going to be interviewing a young lady who has an autoimmune disease, and I hope to bring more awareness to this issue and these diseases. So please join me and welcome to Conversations with Sloan Ivy. So here I am with Ms. Debrie Velasquez. Thank mm-hmm. you for joining me today, Debrie. Thank you for having me. So today we are with Debrie talking about vasculitis. Mm-hmm. And vasculitis is, can you explain to our viewers what vasculitis is? Yeah, well, it's, I mean, it's a lot, first of all. Um, it falls into a lot of different categories and one being it's an autoimmune disease. So a lot of people might be familiar with that right off the bat. Um, It's similar to lupus or multiple sclerosis or rheumatoid arthritis, Um, but mine is a little different because it's a vasculitis. So that basically, to sum it up, it just means it's a disease that affects my blood vessels. Um, But something that comes with all of those diseases is the fact that um, the demographic of who it affects mostly, and then also um, the fact that our immune systems kind of work against themselves and attack themselves. So like a normal cold that you might have, you, your body can fight it off, whereas mine, I, won't be, I wouldn't be able to that easily. Uh, but it was the summer of 2011. Uh, I just fell ill and I thought I had the flu. And then the doctors um, that I went to had no idea what was going on. Um, we thought I had COPD, which was crazy because I'm, young, I'm a young person and it didn't really apply to me. Yeah. But we just knew, knew that on this, this part of my body just kind of was fail, failing. And I had fever, I had chills, my f- skin was turning kind of jaundice, um, my eyes were turning yellow, I was losing a lot of weight. It was really weird and we had no idea, but through a series of tests and different really great doctors, I finally got... Um, diagnosed in June 2011. So. June 2011. Yeah. And so when mm-hmm. you travel for a long time, do you have to find a different doctor to help you while you're there? If something happens, like. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's been that's been a thing, and um, I'm picky about my doctors also mm-hmm. because what I have is so rare and it's crazy. You would you wouldn't believe like the amount of people of professionals who have turned my case away. Really. Yeah. So. Um, why would Why would they turn it away? Um, because it really, what I have specifically, it, like I only know seven people in the world right now who have it. We're all part of like, we all email each other and stuff and we're all like pen pals and we update each other, but literally seven people. And not in the nation. In the, in the world. world, yeah. Girl. There's a girl in the Philippines, there's a girl who's in Korea, there's a man who was in Iran. He just died um, in September. And then there's a girl in Scotland. Um, And then there's another girl in Puerto Rico. So, yeah. Oh, my goodness. And then here um, in the U.S., it's just me. And then I think there was actually one more person who's who's also here in Austin. Really? Which is weird. Yeah, Mm -hmm. she's like in her 60s. Like, she's a woman, an old woman um, Mm -hmm. or older woman, which is, that's rare. Mm -hmm. Um, Because, yeah, I'm 26. I was diagnosed when I was 21. And statistically, it's there's only a 40% chance that I will even make it beyond 10 years. So that means I'm kind of at that halfway mark because that, for me, that would be um, from 21, that'd be 31. Mm-hmm. So, um, and that's only a 40% chance. That's not even a half, like a 50% chance. So, um, yeah, it's and it's crazy. A lot of the people who I do keep in contact with on that note, they are all young, you know, they're all in, we're all in our 20s okay. for the most part, except that one uh, woman who lives here. Yeah. So tell me what, um, before, before you ever diagnosed, so did you know anything about autoimmune disease? I know it's not talked about yeah. as much, and especially when we were growing up, it wasn't talked about as much. Right. So did you know anything about autoimmune diseases at all? No, I didn't. Um, I, it's so crazy because I feel like um, it's barely getting touched on now mm-hmm. in the public. You, you don't really like, so I know Selena Gomez, she just came out um, recently about that she has lupus. lupus yeah. um, and then there's also another uh, mo- uh, 
an actress named Lena Dunham, she just came out yesterday about the fact that she has endometriosis. So I feel like it's kind of getting exposure, but it's still even today isn't getting talked about. And it's crazy because it affects hundreds of thousands of people. And there are hundreds of thousands of types of autoimmune diseases, Mm -hmm. literally. So um, it just, to me, it's shocking that it's it just doesn't get ex- it's not exposed it's not talked about it, is, yeah. it just kind of goes under the rug and people deal with it because it's an invisible disease you can't exactly. see it yeah and so definitely back then i had no idea but What's going on so yeah. how did it make you feel or how did it when you went forward in life and you had to tell people about your disease because mm-hmm. as you i'm going to pick up what you said invisible disease mm-hmm. i know a lot of people feel I don't really need to tell about my disease because you can't see it right. or but are you very open with people especially like your employers or your new friends yes you're just very open I'm telling so them open of time. yeah I just tell everyone that's it's a part of my story and it's mm-hmm. it's it's my it's part of my narrative it's like something I deal with every single day so yeah. it would be really impossible for me to ignore that and just go about my day uh, to new friends or potential people I'm dating or um, uh, anybody, employers, it's just something I can't ignore. So I have to tell people and I embrace it though. It's not something I'm ashamed of because I didn't, I don't feel like I, um, I don't feel like anyone should be ashamed Mm -hmm. of anything, you know, that sets them apart um, in in any type of way. Um, I don't believe like in labels and stuff. So you know, me being a sick person or a disabled person or having an illness, that's not completely who I am. Mm -hmm. It's something I just so happen to deal with, but, um, and it's important for you to know and it's important for me to acknowledge and be aware of in my everyday. And so um, it's my truth, but it's not something that completely makes me. So let's talk about treatments. Okay, so what Uh is a treatment like? when you get and so it's a chemotherapy or yeah okay it's considered on paper it's considered a chemotherapy drug Mm -hmm. um right now i'm on something called actimra uh, Mm -hmm. which is a little bit milder since i'm in remission Mm -hmm. um and it's it's really helped me stay stable and i get it once a month um before whenever i was super sick like really bad Mm -hmm. um i had something a little stronger called cytoxin Okay. Um, and it sound it feels like what it sounds like. I mean, it sounds it's like, yeah, yeah, it doesn't have a nice name. And it's it's uh, it was really rough on me. It it was one of those chemotherapy drugs that you, when you see people on TV, they're throwing up and they are really ill, and just that's how it made me feel. But this one that I'm on now, I I can go to work later that day, so I'm fine. So you, you call them treatments. You don't call it chemotherapy. Yeah. Right? And why is the reason that you call it? Yeah, um, I'll either I either call it treatment or infusion. Infusion. Okay. Um, because I feel like the medicine is getting infused into me, and um, I see it as like those Teslas or those cars that you plug up. Mm-hmm. I feel like I'm just like one of those really hot cars. That I need to go get plugged up and get recharged. And so I literally sit in a chair, a recliner. I get hooked up to an IV, mm-hmm. and for about an hour, it goes through me. Um, and then after that, I get up and I go about my day and I feel like I'm charged up, like mm-hmm. I'm, I'm ready to go and I'm ready to take on anything. Yeah. Like I go So get- tell me when you first found out, so when they told you like the 40% chance when you heard those numbers and everything, yeah. tell me like what you were thinking, what your family was thinking. I heard it. My mom assured me that every, that same doctor who told you those stats, he can go get in a car after work and get in a car accident and mm-hmm. die. So, yeah. you know, that's just the reality. None of us are promised mm-hmm. even the next hour, exactly. you know, that's just... We don't know what's about to happen. So for me to allow another human being kind of um, determine my death sentence, uh-huh. that that was something that I cut off right from the get go. And that's okay. that's when my faith got so much stronger too, mm-hmm. because I realized like he's just another person walking this earth like me. Mm-hmm. Anything can happen to him. Anything can happen to me. You know that doesn't have anything to do with mm-hmm. my illness. Mm-hmm. You know, and I could still. Um, so it, that's how I looked at it. Mm-hmm. I was like, this is not my death sentence. This is not going to be, um, what kills me, yeah. you know? And even if it does, I, no, I don't think it is. Yeah. And I'm going to just say that I'm just speaking into yeah, existence. Girl, speak it. <laughs> so mm-hmm. how was it with your family just coping with you being diagnosed with this? Um, well, it's my mom, man. She's my superhero. She is mm-hmm. really like just the strongest woman that I, I know. And I'm so blessed that I'm her daughter. 
because she she's so strong and she actually has an autoimmune disease and her mother does too and I had no idea and it's I didn't real she didn't even share that with me until I got diagnosed and what she has is different she has Graves disease um, but I was like wow that makes sense you know in middle yeah. school when we would go on like vacations and stuff like I remember she would always kind of duck off and do her own thing or she would go sleep oh, in the hotel tired, room while yeah. we were all hanging out down at the beach or something and I always thought to myself like oh she's a party pooper or whatever <laughs> but now it makes so much sense yeah. and I, you know I was like and I really admire her for doing that and you know I feel like she was trying to protect us, me yeah. and my sister, and I really respect that. And I understand her strength. It's just it's something that I'm understanding the older I am and mm -hmm. having an illness myself. I, I see her tactics and the way that she handled things so gracefully mm -hmm. um, without anyone. She, she, didn't, she was never a victim, and I always try to carry that. Yeah, so my. is there anything... To all the girls, young women out there, to mm -hmm. just society in general, the world that you would like to say about autoimmune diseases, about your disease, about all diseases yeah. in general. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, to all the women or anyone who's dealing with it, I don't know any men personally, which is really strange, but uh, as far as people who are dealing with this, but to anyone who is dealing with it, I would say just keep your head up. Don't be a victim of your illness or your disease or your condition. It's you're going to get through it. You're going to push through it. Whatever you have your mindset on before, prior to getting diagnosed or getting sick, continue that, you know. But at the same time, listen to your body. Really listen to your body and anything that is a little off because you know your body better than anyone else. No one can tell you what you look like or anything like you can feel if something is off. Go get checked out. Go to the doctor get some opinions, get multiple opinions. Don't ever put your faith in one physician just because he has a, a, a certain name. Like just go get multiple opinions. Um, don't Google anything either. <laughs> don't, don't just rely on Google because a lot of stuff gets put out there. Um, and really uh, just educate yourself on, you know, what could be happening to you. And it's okay if something's happening, you know, don't, don't live in that. Don't, you know, don't live in that illness. Don't let it make you. Um, but definitely be aware of what's happening to you. And um, stay encouraged. Stay encouraged. Like, that's the biggest thing. Thank you for watching Conversations with Sloan Ivy. I hope that this episode uplifted you as much as it uplifted me making this episode. I hope you go out and have a conversation with someone. And please, please, please subscribe to the channel so you can stay updated. I will see you next month.